Biden recently announced a proposed rent control agenda, but before we jump into that, make sure you hit subscribe below to stay on top of all of the latest Huntsville, Alabama real estate news. So President Biden is looking to propose this agenda because of the affordability crisis that we have across the US and here in North Alabama. We focus more on this channel on the purchase side, but the rental side is also challenged affordability as well. And so the president is looking to cap rent increases with this program to help tenants and renters be able to stay in their homes and not have to face eviction or move to, uh, to other apartment complexes. And so that's the idea behind it. The structure of this proposed plan is number one, they're looking to cap rent increases at 5% annually and it's set to go into effect for two years. Of course, our survey say that's really any bad idea it starts with having something in place for just a year or two and then it ends up becoming a, a permanent law. We'll talk about whether or not we think this is a bad idea here in just a second, but that's, that's the idea behind it. And I think the idea behind a, a two year period is that politicians are hoping that supply is fixed within that time frame. If you've been watching this channel, you know that we are nowhere close to having the housing supply issue solved in this country within the next year, or even within the next two years as well. So that is really unlikely to be a you know short-term fix. And then the last thing that they're looking at doing is excluding new construction on this proposed bill. So what do the experts say about this? Well, if you've ever taken business in school or taken an econ class, you know that economists are really against rent control. 93% of economists out there say rent control is a bad idea. Swedish economist Asar Limbeck really probably said it best. Rent control appears to be the most efficient technique presently known to destroy a city, except for bombing. Even Barack Obama's top economic advisor, Jason Furman, has come out against rent control as well. And so 93% of economists are against rent control, including Barack Obama's top economic advisor. And so all the experts are, at least 93% of the experts, all agree that rent control could be a very bad thing for this country. So if you're a tenant, you might be asking, why do a lot of economists think this is a bad idea? You know, as a tenant, you're wanting to control your, your expenses. And you know, why do the great landlords need to raise rents over 5% each year? Well, the reason for that is studies show that, number one, housing quality declines with rent control. And the reason for that is that landlords simply don't have enough money associated with you know keeping an apartment at a high quality level because of the extra expenses associated with making the repairs and if they can't recoup their cost then it's an investment for them they can't lose money on the investment so you know simply housing quality declines over over years because of deferred maintenance number two is really a reduced supply if investors aren't making money in a city they're going to go and invest in another city where they can get a return on their investment and so it actually ends up backfiring because there ends up being reduced supply and then if investors stop providing supply we've really seen how good the government is at providing housing so we don't want that solution either and then for all the rental areas that are controlled, the non-controlled apartments typically go up in terms of rents as well. So it does the exact opposite of what it intended, which is keeping prices down. It actually ends up increasing prices as well on other apartment complexes. And you know, you look at it like from a tenant's perspective, you might be thinking, oh, great landlord, all these different things. Well, in reality, it's the government that you might be saying is being greedy because they're raising the cost of basically everything in the economy on these landlords through inflation and also raising their fixed costs in terms of inflation with insurance and then also taxing them at a higher rate. And if they're not able to recoup those additional expenses and their investment no longer cash flows, that ends up being a bad thing, not only for the landlord, but also for the tenant as well. So why are there rent increases in the first place? Well, of course, remodeling, raising the quality of standard for tenants in their apartments, in their homes. Another thing is just increase in labor costs. And you, labor costs are going higher supplies are more expensive because of inflation insurance is going through the roof as a lot of people know especially in, in particular markets and then property taxes are going up as well you know we had a 40 percent increase in values and so what has that done that is increased property taxes dramatically as well and all that is because of inflation 
in reality, home prices have not even increased relative to true money. So a lot of people call our dollar bills money. That is not money, that is fiat currency. There's a difference, you know, that is something that it gets printed. You know, true money is something like gold, which is fixed. And so if you look at this chart, housing values versus gold, you'll see that housing values are actually a little bit on the low side or on the average side. They're, they're nowhere close to the high side, which is what we would think with the housing affordability. It's all due to an increase in currency prices and the amount of currency that has been created out there. But when you look at the true value measured against gold, home prices are at a normal or even slightly below normal level based on this chart. So we obviously have an affordability crisis in this country. How do we get to this affordability crisis? Well, number one is because of deficit spending and all the currency printing that we've done as a nation. That is what's created that misalignment in terms of housing prices and affordability for most Americans right now. So it's a big challenge. This particular policy is likely more politics and trying to buy votes than really anything else at this point. From what I've been reading, a lot of people don't expect for this to pass at this time. Obviously, affordability is something that a lot of Americans have on their minds as casting their votes in November. And so politicians are trying to win those votes, even if it's not something that they're going to be able to enact of at this time. So again, I, I don't think this is going to pass nationwide. However, I do see this starting to pop up likely in several bigger cities. Whether it comes across the US, we'll have to wait and see. Again, with 93% economists out there thinking this is a bad thing, I think it's gonna be ultimately a bad thing for a lot of the cities that enact this. The big thing is politicians are always looking to point fingers or act like they're doing something versus really taking responsibility and responsibility is saying hey we've got a a challenge in this country we got to get our deficit under control we got to stop printing money so that we don't continue to have the inflation that we we've, we've been experiencing and then we also got to put together policies and plans in place to be able to increase the amount of housing supply so that we fix that supply demand imbalance and, and that will help with affordability in the U.S. as well. So that's the main thing that politicians need to be focusing on right now. However, you know, government's been raising taxes, inflation, and also inflating everything that, you know, landlords buy and pay for. So that's really just not fair to expect them to eat the cost. That is not a win-win solution. And if you continue to do that to landlords, uh, you will not be happy with the uh, the results of that. That's going to decrease the over so overall supply, decrease the quality of housing that we have in this country, and ultimately raise prices as well. So on the surface, rent control seems like a good idea, but in reality, we've seen that it can be very hazardous, almost like blowing up a city, as some economists have said. So the solution in my mind is creating policies that create long-term supply, both on the rent side and the purchase side, because this will actually start to affect the supply demand imbalances that we have. And that's ultimately where we need to, to focus on as we have about a 6 million home deficit across the US.